Okay, so section one begins with the setting up of the stance or the Yi Ji Kim Yama. So, feet together, shoulders down. Fist up, bend your knees to the slightly over the toes. Open the feet as far as possible, then rotate on the balls of the feet. From here, just find your natural and relaxed distance over here. Should be approximately shoulder width. And this is now the Yi Ji Kim Yama. Yi Ji refers to the character two in Chinese, which is a short and long line, okay? This is just teaching you the structure from immediately from when you start your stance. The next thing to take into account now is the five lines in the body that we're gonna use as measurements to make sure that our techniques or the ones that we perform are at the correct angle. So we've got the shoulder line, the nipple line, vertical midline, nipple line, and shoulder line. Okay, you'll see why these become important later on. Okay, so now we set up the stance, we do the first movement which is a double tan sound. So from here, the reason why there's a double tan sound is basically what Grandmaster Yip Man used to say is to save time. So you can do two techniques, two perform two movements at the same time, okay? So from here, double tan sound, make sure the knuckles of my thumbs are just underneath my nose. I drop straight down, I rotate at the elbows to make sure I don't bend the wrist, and I pull directly backwards. From here, that's the first section. From here, the second section begins with the fist facing forward, I extend my, my arm along now the center line, which is what I'm drawing, okay? So, wrist, elbow, lockout. I open my arm, arm remains locked, rotate my wrist back, I make a tight fist, and pull back and I repeat on the other side. Wrist, elbow, lockout, open, rotate, and back. So, let's show you this from a different angle. When I'm performing the double tan sound and I drop straight down, what I'm doing here is I'm drawing the vertical midline. I'm splitting the left and right hand side of my body. Okay? Make sure it's not collapsed onto your own body. Everything is out here. Rotate at the elbow to draw the horizontal midline. Now, from this angle, you'll be able to see that the arm remains locked as I perform the punch. Boon sound, make the fist, very, very tight fist over here. This is to stretch and strengthen the extensors and flexors of the forearm. Uh, it's also to develop a, a flexible wrist. Also to decompress the wrist as well, because you'll be hitting a lot. You'll be hitting different implements, a heavy bag, pads, uh, wall bag, whatever. So you need to uh, uh, have a decompression on the, on the wrist because it gets compressed from all the hitting. Okay, open and pull back. Okay, so one more time, everything all together. Double times out. Double gun sal, coin sal, rotating arm, pull back, first section. Second, the fist goes onto the center line, extend, coon sal, and back. Repeat on the other side, and back. So that's basic. Nothing else moves on the body except for the arms. Okay, so now when we do add the layers, this is going to allow us to use this in application. So, first, I perform the double tan sal. I make sure I get my back involved. I curl my back like a cat, okay? Over here, preparing myself, almost like loading a spring of, of the spine. Rotate the tonsils, okay? I've got to really rotate these tonsils because I want to have an extra rotation when I'm performing the tonsils, which is the next movement. I release, rotate. So when I release the, the double tonsils here to, to perform the tonsils, the, the spine naturally flexes, let it do that. I rotate at the elbow, loading up the spine again, pulling back, okay? Here. Yeah. And back. So if I borrow Jeevan, so I set up the stance over here. So with this particular, when you're applying the cross tans out, which is this movement over here, it's done with a single arm, okay? So as Jeevan punches through, he stepped in deep and this forced me to turn, okay? So I'm performing this cross turn sound. The hand is not out here because he can either slip through an elbow or hit me with a back fist. So from here, the cross turn sound is performed with my fingertips facing towards him and not to his shoulder. And I punch completely over here, so I'm making almost a triangle shape. So he said, so do the quick. Right, all the way through, then follow up with my punches. That's the turn sound over here. 
it's important that I try, especially when you learn this, you, you twist the tonsils out, because this starts to tighten up the connective tissue, this gives you a natural lock on the body. Okay, so as he presses through, if I release my hand, he can just slap this tonsil back into me, I have to do something else, I want to keep a good tonsil out, this tightens up the connective tissue, and as he presses me, it gives a signal to my lower body to turn, so I can perform the turn and deliver the punch back. Okay? So it's the same with the Gansa, even though they performed with both the hands, in application it's just a single arm. Okay? So if we go to the traditional application, when he gives me a lower punch in the body, I'm going to chop down the hard part of my arm onto the soft part of his arm. Okay, so this is the traditional way of doing it. So I'll chop in and deliver the punch. There'll be a bit of a rotation, that's a better way to apply this. Rather than just go straight in, I'll have a bit of a rotation on the inside gate, chop on his arm, pain here, uh, and deflection as well, and him with a punch, okay? So, the other way I like to do, which is frowned upon, but it shouldn't really be because of what you get from doing it this manner. So, if you punch me with the other arm, rather than try to switch and go on the inside over here, there's absolutely nothing wrong going on the outside on this arm as well, right? If I go on the outside and punch him on the outside gate, there's a lot of tactical advantages to, to defending the punch this way. If you haven't trained my chin yet and your little bones get hurt because you haven't done any kind of conditioning work, which would happen through you know, regular repetition, then you don't have to chop in. I can always just slice. I use a, a cutting energy to help guide his, his uh, punch towards the floor. So as he steps in, uh, there we go. Right? Then if he punches properly, I can demonstrate it better. Yeah. Right, so then you get to see uh, uh, how I can actually manipulate his energy, okay? So I can now slice him, I guide his energy to the floor while carrying up with my, with my attack up here. Finally is the, the kunsa, okay, this rotating arm. So you've done the double tansas and the kunsa is the rotating of the arms. It's a really simple application over here. Whenever, say if I'm punching and he decides to block my arm down and he blocks my arm down, again, I can just use the rotating movement to, to release my arm, clear it and hit him back. So this is application for the first section.